the Armadillo and Onion Inspired Sleep Elf. This tutorial is about using the shape and form of the armadillo and an onion to inform a solution to the design brief. A quick overview of this tutorial is we're going to look at ideation, in other words, looking at the shape and forms of the armadillo and the onion, merge them and use them to get to a solution called ideation. We're going to look in detail at the shape and form of the onion and how this could be implemented into the building. We're going to look at a, an ingenious solution from Fervex Architects who had a problem with sound. You can see the traffic uh, on the right hand side and at the bottom over here. So those panels would screen uh, the building from the sound and the noise pollution. We're going to look at the main entrance of the building, which looks sort of like the head of an armadillo. That's the slant. That's the slant. And uh, yeah, the next picture is a bit of a close up, which shows the panels again. Uh, great idea to include some glass windows right there to get some more light into the building. Uh, there we can see the panels very close up which blocks out the noise pollution we're going to look at a diagram passive solar where the sun hits this building and heats up the panels and the heat gets transferred to the inside we're going to look at diagram b as well you can see the cars and the traffic the noise pollution which travels towards the building and where it is screened we're going to look at a freehand sketch where this idea started, where you, we have the ribs of the building. Uh, that's the like a dome shaped or arc. The exoskeleton or the ribs, and there's lots of detail, but we'll come back to that. This is a side elevation showing some panels which open and close, retracts. That's retracted out during summer and retracted in into the cavity of the exoskeleton during winter so the sun can get to the inside. A close-up, a comment on the on the green roof, the louvers which would screen the sun. We will also look at models from SketchUp here. The final solution or the suggested solution is shown where we have some photovoltaic panels, a green roof, we go, we're going to look at the shadows, the deciduous trees, and so on. Another view where we can see the entrance. I'll make some comments about the entrance, which looks like the shape or the head of an armadillo. We will look at deciduous trees in this instance and how it screens the sun from the building. We also have a sectional view where we can use SketchUp We've got a slider not shown yet. When once you move the slider to the specific season, month, day, time of day, uh, we can see the result of the trees, louvers, etc., on the building, allowing lots of sun in during summer to heat up the building. That's the passive solar principle. But during winter, uh, the leaves would screen the sun. So, uh, sorry, the leaves would. Uh, drop during winter and the sun will be able to get into the building. We're going to get back to the slides now and discuss some of the detail. I will use my cursor to explain and show some of the detail. We'll start off with the armadillo shape right here. We can see the arc shape of the armadillo right there and in the closed position it rolls up in a ball to protect its underbelly. We have another arc right there, looks like ribs, which sits on the outside. Typical exoskeleton principle where the skeleton of an animal sits on the outside. We have the onion. This is just uh, some design sketches of Marty Bodek, a, an Israeli architect on a synagogue in Israel. Just some ideas uh, from him. We have the 
helmet shape or armadillo shape building right here with a large glass curtain in front which will allow a lot of sun in. We have this structure in between some buildings in a city. It almost looks like the back of an armadillo. And yeah, look, look at the interesting texture. If you look up closely, you can see this rough, like scale-like texture uh, on the surface of this building. Another arc, and maybe an inverted arc, and you can see it's almost like an, like an underbelly. You could even have a glass floor in this building, for instance. Our next slide, some more details about the Onion-inspired synagogue by Marty Bodek. Uh, if we look at this sketch over here, a sectional view which opens it up, we can see some vertical louvers which sits over here. So in this instance, or this idea, shows that the sun could enter through these louvers and heat up the building, although the outside would also be heated up. It could be concrete. There's just so many ideas uh, which one can come up with. So we could even have a hollow wall where we could have water in between, waterproof, and the sun could heat that up in certain areas or sections or segments of this building. Look at the horizontal layers here. Yeah? Concrete and steel reinforcing would probably be the best building material uh, in this instance. This shows a building uh, designed by Formberg's architects in Singapore for a specific family. The building's close to the highway. You can see the primary highway and you can also see a secondary or tertiary road at the bottom here, yeah, which would produce a lot of noise. That noise would travel towards the building and using biomimetics or biomimicry, biomimicry meaning we are miming nature, miming the panzer or the panels of the armadillo to screen uh, the noise pollution which travels from the road towards the house. Ingenious uh, solution. Hence, it is called the armadillo house. Where you choose to build your home is almost as important as its design, but sometimes you have to make do with what you've got. For one family in Singapore, that meant finding a way to coexist with a traffic crossing and a highway viaduct right outside their door using the technique of biomimicry. Formberg's architects found a way to create a peaceful, minimalist home among the rush of traffic and noise. We have the front or the main entrance of the building and you can see the slant here. It, it almost looks like the head or the skull of the armadillo. We will see that same shape at the entrance of the final design. Keep that in mind. And the front of the house have got large glass panels, which one could say is like the underbelly. It's not really under, it's on the side or the side belly, which will allow a lot of sun into the building. A closer look, uh, an interesting idea from the architects uh, was to include some glass panels on the sides to allow more light into the building. A close-up of the specific panels, see how it's staggered to allow light to enter the building. These two diagrams explain two simple principles. The first one in diagram A, passive solar design, uh, where we have the sun and the sun's rays would heat up this panel right here. See the orange color? It That's warm that panel is warm to touch so the blue which we see over here is the heat being transferred to the inside of the house heating up the building during winter we also have some deciduous trees deciduous trees meaning that it would shed its leaves during winter allowing the sun to get into the building but during summer the foliage would screen the sun from getting into the building keeping it cooler the second principle is insulation against noise. Uh, diagram B shows the sound waves from the primary highway and the secondary tertiary uh, road at the bottom here, traveling towards 
the house. There's a, a wall right there, which also assists to screen the noise from the secondary and tertiary road right there. So those panels, the typical armadillo panzer, is a great way to solve that problem. This is a freehand sketch of the possible solution, starting now the idea of the armadillo and onion inspired building. So we have many different components to this building. I'm going to comment quickly on it. There are three main components where we can harvest energy. We can harvest energy from the sun, we can harvest rainwater and we can harvest wind. In this instance the building faces or the back of the building faces the dominant wind direction so the wind would spin these wind turbines and that would generate electrical power. We have some photovoltaic panels on the sides of the ribs or the exoskeleton in this instance. It's on the edges here as well as under and above depending on the angle of the of the ribs. We have some louvers so the sun would be screened by these louvers. The sun is higher in summer and lower in the sky during winter. So depending on these louvers the sun would be able to get through them uh, during winter but as the sun is higher in summer it will not be able to get through the louvers and that would screen the building from the heat keeping the building cooler. This is a side elevation showing some retracts. These are additional components or panels which retracts here they are in the out or closed position and here they are retracted into the cavity of the rib or the exoskeleton. Now during summer you don't want the body be, to be too hot so you want to screen the sun. So those panels would close, it would retract and close and of course keep the building cool. In winter however the retracts or the panels would open and slide into that cavity so the winter sun would shine into the building and heat it up to save power and energy. This is a close-up of the armadillo building. You can see the exoskeleton, you can see the green roof, I'll comment on the green roof here. See the green uh, roof, the green roof could be at the bottom or at the top and the main function of a green roof is insulation as well as producing lovely uh, oxygen absorbing carbon dioxide through photosynthesis which is a great way to uh, have fresh oxygen around the building. You could also have living walls inside, green walls inside the building uh, which will also produce some lovely fresh oxygen. This is a model done in SketchUp SketchUp Make is free where you can download that for free from the internet and you can model anything uh, on SketchUp Make. We have deciduous trees right there. Deciduous trees shed its leaf, leaves during winter and of course it would screen the sun during summer when it's got its full foliage. So we have the panels, the, the summer panels in position, retracted out as you can see them. Uh, something else, we have water tanks inside these ribs here, which means that when we harvest the water, it would be when it rains, we would channel the water into these tanks, and these and this water would uh, the grey water would be sent to the cisterns of the toilets, saving water. Grey water being meaning it's not filtered, and then of course we could also filter it which means it becomes white water and that could be used for general purpose inside the house. We also have this arc. This arc is covered with solar thermal panels. In simple terms, it's just black pipes uh, filled with water. The sun would heat up the water inside the pipes and that water would, sent, would be sent to the hot water cylinder inside the building, uh, saving power. It saves power because the hot water cylinder don't have to work that hard. Uh, it receives 
hot warm water uh, from the solar thermal panel. A comment about the entrance of this building. We'll see the head here. The idea was to create a head which looks something like an armadillo's head. That looks like the skull maybe. This could be the top jawbone. Uh, I'm sure you can see that. Um, this is to add uh, an additional dimension of modernism maybe to the building, I would, I would think. Um, yeah, and the, the brief is design a armadillo and onion inspired building. So we can see the onion, which is the layers right there, or the exoskeleton of the armadillo. But at the same time, we can see the head of the armadillo. In SketchUp, we have tools, shadow tools. It's not shown yet, but it's just a slider. And as you move the slider, you can uh, choose the, the season, the day of time, uh, time, of day, uh, time of day, and so on. So as you slide it, these shadows would move and you would be able to assess the amount of sun that gets into the building or the amount of sun that is screened from the building. This is a sectional view and this is the ideal time to use the slider or the shadow tool. When you move that tool or that slider, you will see that the, the shadows and shading would move. It's a dynamic tool. It would move. I'll show that in a, a next tutorial. Uh, so sectional views in SketchUp are extremely useful when testing shadows and shading for passive solar design. A set of video tutorials are available on this specific design. The tutorials include geolocation, shadows and shading, and many more. See them on this channel.